All right, we're gonna go through a survey and design and draw out, draw out a suggested design on this maxillary Kennedy class two with a modification space, removable partial denture. So if that's the case we're gonna start out with. Ideally, we wanna find a tilt for the table that gives us a survey line or a crest of convexity at the ideal spot ideal place on where we need clasps. In this particular case, we're gonna need a clasp next to this distal extension, one on the canine and one on the molar. The ideal crest of convexity is gonna be at the junction of the middle and cervical third, hopefully shaped like the contour of the gingiva. And if we can find a path that, or a tilt that gives us that on all three teeth, that's ideal. You know, we don't always get the ideal, but that's what we want to find when we go through and tilt this. So, so I'm going to start out with it relatively flat. I'm going to use the analyzing rod, and I'm going to look at it with that and try and get as close as I can before I use the carbon marker on here. In this particular case, because we've got a modification on a central, I want to look and make sure that I have a tilt that's going to allow that contact area to be roughly, uh, or that survey line roughly where the mesial contact would be and not have a big black triangle in that area on either of those anterior teeth, but especially on the central, okay? So I know that this is a tilt that gives me as close as I can with these teeth that, uh, that clasping area or that crest of convexity because we want the clasp to stay as low on the teeth as we can so it doesn't rock those teeth out. The higher the clasp is, the more it's going to have tendency to uh, to move those teeth, similar to grabbing on the uh, top of a fence post and rocking that post in and out. If we grab onto the fence post as low as we can, it's it's harder to remove that. And so I'm using the side of the carbon marker. Okay, be careful not to use the tip because that's going to give you a false mark. You want to use the side, and I'm going to go around each of these, each of these abutment teeth, including the lingual, where our bracing arms will be, or our reciprocation. We'll put our three tripod marks on. Those of us that have made partial dentures, at least old school, we prefer them to be on the inside if we can. So I'm looking for a spot without moving this up and down that puts all three marks in the same plane. I want them to be as separated as I can. If they're close together, they're gonna to be less accurate. If I can't get them inside, then I'll do it, use it on the outside, okay, like this. Okay, you could mark it up and down, take your pencil, okay, and make a vertical one. But as a rule, you want three marks, only three. More is not better all in the same plane that allows the lab to, once it's off the table, to go back and uh, put it in the same position. Tripod mark circled in red. Okay. Either inside or outside, but just for instructional purposes, I'll, I did both. Okay, now we can take it off the table and I'll go through and draw a possible design for this case. Considering that we'll think, consider everything relatively ideal, that we don't have periodontal or mobility issues or, or occlusal interferences. Okay, we'll start out with a distal extension, that non-tooth supported, the tissue supported area. In this particular case, okay, uh, this patient's right side. So we're gonna want a mesial rest, okay, because we, this is uh, tissue supported, always a mesial rest, all right? We'll go over here on this side. This is a tooth supported area. We're gonna have a mesial rest on the molar. We would have a cingulum rest on the canine, whether you prepare it or not, okay? With the modification space, we wanna rest on each side, almost always. Anytime you've got edentulous areas, you wanna try and and make it be a tooth supported area or rest on both sides. So in this particular case, we would rest on the central and we would rest on the, on the canine like that. Okay, so that's gonna be part of our design. Now, 
this particular clasping area on this side, we could, we've got some options. We can go with a wire that's flexible here. We can go with an I-bar, or we can go with what's called an RPI design, which is similar to an I-bar, but there's no reciprocation on the lingual. It's a combination of the distal guide plane and the mesial rest that forms the reciprocation. In, uh, and that allows this tooth to be have less metal attached to it so that when they bite down and compress this tissue, it's not gonna rock that tooth out. So I'll start out by drawing it with a, an RPI design on this. Okay, so in other words, so it's four millimeters away from the gingiva, okay, that the major connector is gonna come down. It's gonna come up to a guide plane that we need to keep relatively broad. Okay, I'm gonna tuck over the entire distal surface. Okay, line angle to line angle. Come onto the tissue by one millimeter, okay, and then come down and form our finish line, which is going to start aiming back towards the hamular notch, which is here, like that. Okay, from there we'll make our grid work that's going to be the retention for the acrylic to hold that onto. Okay, the eye bar needs to be on the mesial half of the tooth, not in the middle, on the mesial. It's going to extend from the survey line down to four millimeters below the gingival tissue, just like this is here, or like a mandibular major connector would be, and it's gonna extend back so it comes, joins the grid work in the embrasure between the next two teeth. In other words, not right here where we have to set a denture tooth, we want it in the embrasure in between. So back here between where the second premolar would be and the first molar. Okay. In the retentive part, Okay, the 10 thousandths undercut or 0.025 millimeters area, the clasp is gonna to touch the tooth from that area all the way up to the survey line and not above. So it covers, an eye bar covers a area, a surface. It's not a pinpoint. Okay, from here, we're gonna come over and do the cingulum rest over the canine and it's gonna have a mesial guide plane always next to the edentulous space. The mesial guide plane, whether you prepared it or not, there's gonna be metal in that area. It's gonna come onto the tissue by a millimeter. We're gonna form our finish line, our external finish line. We're gonna do the same thing on the central, cingulum rest, mesial guide plane. Try not to show metal in that area, but it needs to cover the mesial surface onto the tissue by a millimeter and join to your finish line where the acrylic is gonna butt up against the metal. Okay, and draw our grid work like that, all right? This area, this tooth supported area, we're gonna have a cingulum rest. It's gonna wrap around to a distal guide plane, almost to the line angle, down onto the tissue by a millimeter. Come back to form our grid work for this edentulous area. I'll go back and draw a clasp shortly on that, okay? Mesial rest in here. We're gonna do an acres clasp because this is tooth supported. It's gonna follow the survey line, stay as low as we can. Okay, so in other words, right at the survey line till we get down to the retentive tip or the retentive third, terminal third, and it's gonna engage that measured 10,000 sunder cut in that area, okay. From here, we've got our mesial guide plane, comes out of the rest, okay. I'm not gonna quite finish that yet. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my grid work. Now our major connector is gonna be a little bit, or our lingual bracing for that clasp is gonna be a little bit dependent on this major connector. Because we extend so far back on this side, I'd like to try and extend this side back there as I can so the major connector is not at a big angle. So I could possibly put a lingual arm on here for bracing. If I do, it's a, it's a broad arm, wider than what this is. So it supports the most of the lingual surface of that tooth, but it has to stay above the survey line. In this particular case, I'm gonna plate it. I'm gonna come along here so I can extend this major connector back here because I wanna cross the median suture at right angles and I wanna extend that back like that. So I'm gonna have a lingual plate in this particular case. Now I can finish the major connector. I'm gonna do an anterior posterior strap I want to keep this palatal area open as much as I can to take some weight off the framework and allow some patient's tongue to be a little more comfortable and less speech issues in there. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. 
up here. Uh, my survey line is worn off or I didn't get it surveyed good. This could be an acres clasp because it's too supported or an eye bar. I'm gonna draw an eye bar on here. So it's a little more aesthetic. And it's gonna connect between the two premolars. So when we're all said and done, that's an idea for a suggested design. Okay, so this is open. We could potentially have plated that. The advantage of this is that it allows uh, stimulation of the periodontal tissue in that area and keeps that open. Uh, the downside is that sometimes that's a food trap. Okay. But it's either way, it's an it's a acceptable design. The lateral, because it's uh, just one tooth between the two adjacent teeth, I would plate that. If we didn't, we would have to come all the way down, four millimeters down and back up. And uh, with the canine and the central both being plated, we would just extend that, extend that lingual plate on the lateral.